Good morning. We welcome each of you out this morning. This morning we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I, I've spoken uh, on this issue uh, more than once, but I'm a firm believer when God leads me back to something, we go through it again. And as the time uh, is going on right now, um, the things that are taking place uh, in our nation, uh, amongst our friends, amongst our family, uh, I'm one of those preachers that I'm going to step up and I'm going to say something. I'm not going to be silent. I'm not... Uh, you may not like what I say, but I'm going to try to say it the way God intends for us to hear it. And that's my promise to you. It's always been my promise uh, to you. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 12, we read, For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of, of one member, but of many. If the feet would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an ear, I do not belong to part of the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing uh, be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them has he chosen. If all were a single member, where would the body be? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Grace Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful for the opportunity to be in your house. God, I pray that you would just fill this church with your power and your presence and that you would just allow us to hear this morning what you need us to hear. God, I pray that you give unto us the words that you need us to have this morning, that we might go forward from this place, that we might be the hands and feet of Christ, and that we might love on other people so that they might see your love also. And all these things I pray in Christ's most wonderful and precious and holy name. Amen. This morning I wanted to talk about something that I've noticed this week that's it's bothered me. It bothered me about two years ago when everybody tried to separate uh, out our nation by race again. It's been tried numerous times. Uh, we read in the scriptures where we're all one blood. That, that if you're saved, if you're a Christ follower, that's all that God sees. He doesn't see the, the pigmentation of your skin. But all he sees and all he needs to know that you can go to heaven is to see the bloodshed covering of Jesus Christ. And, and at this time, we're facing a, another issue. For the last year or so, we've been facing one uh, over mass. Whether somebody should have to wear a mask, whether somebody shouldn't wear a mask, whether somebody who is wearing a mask, are they sick? Are they going to get me sick? Or, or, or are they just blatantly disrespecting uh, me and, and, and because they're not wearing a mask? Or, or am I disrespecting them because I'm asking them to wear a mask? Maybe they have a health issue that I don't know about. And I'm seeing the same people do the same thing over this vaccination. And it's making me sick. It's, it's, it's physically making me want to vomit. To, to see people turn on each other over a shot. Over something that to me is just like the flu shot was a few years back. If you want to get it, get it. If you don't, don't. But to see people outing family members, outing friends over whether they got it or whether they hadn't. Who cares? It's their choice. Maybe they feel that it is best to 
protect them because guess what? Some people have had the vaccine, I believe, have been saved by it because it kept them from dying when they got COVID. Some people who haven't gotten, I believe that that's okay too because it may have killed them to get it. There's so many sides to these things. We've, we've become a nation that's no longer one. You know, our, our, our thing, our, our, our thing says we were one nation under God, but we're, we're no longer one nation. The main reason is because we hadn't been under God in a long time. Amen? Our country has strayed from God for a long time. And it makes me sick. And I'm not usually one to get up here and to, to just uh, tell people that y'all need to wake up. But guess what? Folks, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. Because it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on on the vaccine. What matters is, are you saved or are you lost? Are you a Christ follower or are you not? We were reading today over in the book of John in the 10th chapter. And the Pharisees are coming after Christ. And they, they, they pick up rocks, fisting to stone him. And Jesus said, what have I done? He said, look at my actions. My actions speak whose I am. Meaning he is the son of God because his actions showed it. It proved it. But yet because of fear, we know what those Pharisees did ultimately, don't we? They took him to a cross, didn't they? And they put him up on it. Because they were fearful. Fearful. And that's what I see today. I don't see, as, as Paul describing here in Corinthians, you're like, well, you, you didn't read nothing about being fear. And I, you read about the body being one. That's right. I read about the body being one, and we all have different parts of that body. For that body to work together, each part has to do its part. But if we're arguing, if we're bickering, see... The reason Paul had to go through this is because the Corinthian church was so divided. They were so divided that when they had communion, there were groups that were getting fat and drunk, and there were other groups that didn't have any wine or bread to eat during the communion or drink during the communion because they were so separated. They were so divided over issues. And I see our nation... Our churches, our people, dividing again. And to me, this is about the third time in about two and a half, three years that I've seen this big division. I even wrote on Facebook yesterday, and some of y'all probably read it. I, I said, you know, I wish the scripture actually read that Satan is, is walking around seeking whom he may divide instead of whom he may devour. Because that's what he seems to be doing. He seems to be doing just that. But what he's really doing is he's feeding off of people's fear. He's feeding off of people's fear. In, in the book of Timothy, Paul said that, that we were not given unto a, 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 a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love. And what he meant was that, that we don't have to be fearful of these things. Christ himself said, don't fear those that can take this life from you, but fear the one who determines where you go for eternity. That we fear God. That we fear God. That we have respect for God. Now, am I standing up here saying today that I do not... Uh, have fear for this virus you're absolutely right i have no fear of this virus but i have a respect for it right. i went to visitation last night of my oldest son one of his best friends father and he passed from COVID. 
I have a respect for. If I get it, I might die. But I don't fear it. But I don't fear it. Because all it can do is take this earthly body. All it can do is take this earthly body. So what I want people to understand and what I want people to realize is whatever side of the fence you're on, on the mask, on the vaccination, whatever, it's fine. I wear my mask when I'm supposed to. When I don't have to wear that thing, I don't wear it. I lose my breath when I do. But that's probably because I'm overweight. That's the truth. Take I'll take responsibility for that. Yeah. But no matter which side of the fence uh, on the mask or the vaccine, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you feel like that it will help you and benefit you to take it, take it. I know people who have had it and I love them still anyway. I know people who haven't had them, and guess what? I love them still anyway. To call people out because they have or haven't, to me, is just pure selfishness. It's, it's pure selfishness. What, what we're doing is, we're, we're real. okay, this is what I think about it. So if you don't fit in what I think about it, guess what? I don't like you. Well, whoop de do. Maybe they don't like you either. And they're showing it on Facebook. They're going back and forth. Anyway. But the idea is what you're doing is you're, you're, you're putting a, a selfish spin on it because they don't fit in your little box. But Paul here says that we're many different members. There are people, you know, there are people that have gotten the vaccine because they feel that that's what God wants them to do. There are people that have not gotten the vaccine because they feel that is what God is wanting them to do. Who's right? Who's going to make the decision? President Biden? <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is we make the best decision for our health, our families, our friends, and that we accept what other people, the choices that other people make, and we allow them to make those choices. We've been doing that as a nation for years. That's the whole reason we have an issue of homosexuality in this country. We let them make their choices and we move on. I don't answer for anybody else's problems, for their choices. I answer for mine. And if my choice is to be negative, to belittle, to, to down somebody, then is that choice a choice that Christ would have made? No. no. The worst thing that anybody could ever say that Christ did was he called some of the Pharisees snakes. He called them snakes. And somebody said, well, that wasn't very nice. <clears throat> and uh, we have to realize that sometimes the truth hurts but that was the worst thing that they could ever say that Christ ever did and I believe the reason that Christ did it is because Christ was trying to get them to wake up if you read the book of John you see a lot of interaction between Christ and the Pharisees and I believe all of that interaction was to get them to wake up. Was to get them to see that he was the Messiah. That, that he was the one that they needed to follow. 
But guess what? They feared him. They feared him. I believe it's because they did realize who he was. And they did realize that they were doing wrong. So they went after him. Do you notice Christ never picked up a rock? You notice Christ never picked up a stone to stone them? Who had the ultimate right to stone somebody? The one that was blameless, right? Amen. But he never picked up a rock. I don't believe he ever thought about it. I don't believe the thought ever entered his mind. Boy, it'd just be easier to stone these fools. But it entered theirs all the time. And unfortunately, as human beings, it entered ours very often. I pray today, as we go from this place, that we forgive others. I, I pray that we love on others. We show them compassion no matter what side of the fence they're on. And even if they pick up those stones to throw them at us, I pray that we leave ours on the ground. I pray that we act like the Jesus that we claim to follow. And we show people love, whether they show it back or not. That's the hardest thing to do. That's one of the hardest things to do is love somebody that doesn't act like they love you back. But that's what Jesus calls us to do. Because that's what Jesus did. Because Jesus went to that cross for those very same people that picked up those stones. Those very same people that put the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet and placed a crown of thorns on his head. He went to that cross for them. He went to that cross for you and me. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I pray that we see everybody the way that Christ saw us. I pray that we reach out, that we help where we can. And then in that same chapter, that same 10th chapter of the book of John, when those Pharisees were trying to arrest him, maybe we have to do as Jesus did. Maybe we have to get out of there. Maybe we have to get out of there. Go somewhere else. Get away from those for a while. Let them calm down. But I pray that we love on them. I pray that we love on them. I pray that we become one body. Even though the body has many members and they're, they're different, and but I wanted you to see that this morning that, that he keeps saying, but it's still one body. There's only one heaven. There's only one place that we're going to go. And everybody who has received that bloodshed covering is going to be there. And I pray that we all start getting along a little more <laughs> like we're going to get along there. It may not happen. The, the, the Bible tells me that the world's just going to get worse before Christ returns. That, it, that it's going to get worse, but it doesn't mean that we don't do our part. It doesn't mean that we don't do our part. Because the only way we can be a city on a hill is when everybody else looks a certain way, we look different, right? We tell our kids often... It's okay to be different. God created us all uniquely, and it's okay for us to be different. Out of, out of the four of us, uh, five of us now, sorry, my math's off, my oldest son 
is a redhead. I ain't none of the rest of us got no red hair. So I got a little of my beard I used to have. Now it's mostly gray. But he stands out. He's our ginger. But we love him anyway. We love him anyway. It's okay to be different. It's okay to stand out. God created us all differently. And I pray that as we stand out as Christ followers, that's the ultimate way to stand out. Is to look like Christ. Is when everybody else picks up rocks that you leave yours laying on the ground. And that we love on folks. I pray that we all do that this week. I pray that everybody who hears this message can realize that we need to forgive each other. We need to help each other. We need to accept people's choices. It's their choice. You don't answer for it. All the Bible asks us to do is to love them. Whether we think they're right or wrong, Scripture says to love them. Jesus loved on those Pharisees a lot more than I probably ever would have. They wanted to pick up rocks and stone me. That would have been tough. But Jesus loved on them. And in fact, he loved them so much when he was hanging on that cross, what did he say? Father, forgive them. For they know not what to do. They know not what to do. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Grace, Heaven, Father. We thank you this morning for the opportunity to be here. God, we thank you for a chance to come to open your words. God, I pray that we take those words that we apply them to our hearts and our lives, that going forward, we might be those hands and feet. God, that it doesn't matter. Lord, we just need to lay our rocks down. We need to love on each other. Even if it's from a distant God, we need to love on each other and just, just accept what people choose as their choice. And still love on them anyway because we know that whether they're right or wrong, Christ still died for them just as much as he died for us. God, I pray that people see the thing that you showed me a long time ago is that the God that it's it's not us against them, but it's us against sin. And God, only through you can we overcome. God, I thank you for all that you do for us, all that you've done. I ask you to go with us as you guide us and direct us. And all these things we pray in Christ, most wonderful and precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.